because you believe in Adam and Eve, yet you're an evolutionary biologist, right? How can you believe in Adam and Eve and, and believe in evolution as well? Again, this is my personal take on things based on the science, as a biologist, one, and about how I understand yeah. So this is kind of a disclaimer. So God, God, other people want to call that big power something else from different religions or different, uh, you know, backgrounds. That's fine. For me as a Muslim, it is God, Allah. He created all the laws of the universe, and then the universe began. As the universe began and unfolded uh, with time, everything in it followed those laws, whether they're laws of physics, laws of biology, which include evolution and so on. Because evolution is a law, it does not contradict or say that there's no God. Because I'm saying God created the law and then the law unfolded. So evolution, the theory, the mechanism, Darwin himself never, never denied there being a God. And if, if one could go back and read The Origin of the Species, you see that clearly in, his, in the last paragraph of The Origin of the Species, saying that God created the universe with all its laws. And according to those laws, you have the beauty uh, uh, and diversity of all living uh, or not, you know, or things that have become extinct or will be in the future. So there's no contradiction. If you believe there's a God, that doesn't mean you, you, you don't believe in evolution or vice versa. Because if God is the all-powerful who put the laws, among them evolution, and things unfolded. So that's number one. Number two, uh, as, 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 and, and to me, the law of evolution and the mechanism of evolution by which all the diversity of organisms were produced is a testimonial to the greatness and power of God and the elegance. As Einstein said, when you have a simple law that can explain everything, that's a testimonial and evidence of, of power and elegance. But if you have you know, little, little things, that's, that's not a testimonial to the power or elegance of God. So having a law like evolution is, is much more evidence that there's a God than explaining it, like you said, where, oh, let's create just a perfect human being once and for all. To me, that, that, that's not a testimonial to, to elegance and beauty and power of the creator. So humans evolved from other, other organisms, that ancestors that came before them. The, the form of humans, Homo sapiens, that we know, uh, today's uh, uh, the first emergence is around 200,000 years ago. Uh, and so, first of all, we don't come from monkeys. Monkeys are our cousins. They come from a branch, of tree, a branch that is uh, similar to ours. We have a common ancestor but we don't come from monkeys. What, are, what does a common today. ancestor mean? Because people get really confused when they hear common ancestor because it just sounds like, if I said I have a common ancestor to you, it sounds like we had similar grandparents 2,000 years ago or something like that. Yeah, I mean, every living thing uh, is related to every living thing if you go back enough in time. So even a, a bacteria, a monkey, a frog, ultimately we all go back to the first cell that, that came to be. All right, and that's like millions of years ago. Okay, so there is a common ancestor. It depends on where do you want to, how far back do you want to look. So uh, that's why the tree of life, right? If you really go back way to the beginning, then all our living organisms are related. If you and have a one common ancestor. If you want to just go back uh, two hundred thousand, three hundred years ago, then you can find the common ancestor between us and monkeys. Monkeys evolved and became what monkeys are today, and ho humans evolved to what humans are today. So we're cousins. We don't come from a monkey. We have a common ancestor. So what it, does that mean that there was one being that was a certain species and from it branched monkeys and from it branched humans? It's not a simple, no, and there's never one. It's a population, it's a group, right? You have a group and then slowly, the, if you had one big group, which was the common ancestor, a common group, and then somehow these, the, there was these, there was a split in the group, all right? So you had two groups. A physical split? One, like We what? don't know, right? It could be either, you know, a group went on, uh, there was a separation because of a volcano or an earthquake, right? And then if you give it enough time to evolve differences, right, 300,000 years, then these start to become a little bit different, a little bit different, a little bit different until they become two separate species. Right? But this takes a very, very long time, and they can never meet because if they meet, then they mix again, and then you lose anything that was specialized. Then, then that 
doesn't that kind of conflict with Adam and Eve then? Because when would you plug in Adam and Eve into this equation? Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting question. And, and the way I look at it, uh, two ways, two things, two points. One, uh, first of all, I remind myself and everyone that the Quran is not a book of science. You're not going to find every theory in the Quran, and you're not going to find every example in the Quran uh, for every theory and every discovery. That's not the purpose of the Quran. Because if everything was going to be in there, there would be no point of going to discover. The Quran's purpose is to give us a way of life, right? What are the morals? What are the values? How we think and how we approach life. That's, that's all. And so any story, any example in it is not there to prove a scientific theory. It's there for us to learn from it on how to conduct our lives as human beings. That's how I look at the Quran. So this to me is very important. So hence the story of Adam and Eve the, the, the reason behind that story is for us to learn the moral value, not to talk about who was the first person, what, where did they emerge, what does that mean biologically. That's not the purpose of the story. The purpose of the story is the morals and the values of taking a decision, of knowing what's right and what's wrong, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So to me, that's what, how I look at the story of Adam and Eve. Because whatever group of of uh, of humans that evolved to be what we know today as homo sapiens was probably a group of people uh, that, that evolved to be that. So where does Adam and Eve fit in that? To me, I take Adam and Eve's story for me as a story to learn from it and not to say, I want to identify the biological evidence of the first human being. Now, having said that, it's open, right? Allah told us to keep asking questions and to seek information and try to understand and ask more questions. If somebody doesn't feel satisfied, for example, uh, with this explanation, then that's, that's up to them then to go and become scientists and explore more, right? We can't just not like what we, not like a particular explanation uh, and just, you know, stand on the side. We need to make the effort. And that's what the Quran tells us. Make the effort and become a scientist and go find, maybe there's another explanation. And maybe there is. In a hundred years, somebody will say, oh, no. Uh, that explanation was not the right one. We've discovered new science and or somebody came in with a brilliant, innovative idea and explained it in a different way. And that's fine. You know, in Islam, there's a hadith that says the, the scientist or the scholar who, uh, who uh, you know, uh, who tries to find an explanation uh, and strives to find an explanation. If they're right, they get two rewards. And if they're wrong, they get one reward. So in either case, you get a reward for trying to answer the question. And to me, this is so freeing and, and, and encourages us to keep seeking and answering, to have the confidence to propose new hypotheses, to propose new answers, while being humble uh, and knowing that that could change later. But we have to keep on trying. For me, I I I, I look at the Quran and I and I see a book that proves itself through questioning it and and, and as you said that and, and proves itself scientifically as well. Though, so this makes me go, I, I can't think of. Adam and Eve as a hypothetical or just look at the lessons. Part of the scientific method is not being like pseudoscience, not trying to just confirm your own beliefs. And so I take that same approach with the Quran. I try to prove the Quran wrong. And through that proof, I usually find it to be correct. I've never found the Quran to be wrong so far, but it's through my efforts of proving it wrong, trying, attempting to prove it wrong, that I found it to be a miracle of a book. And so my... I, I have to, it's, that, that still leaves me with Adam and Eve because I personally think of it as a real world event that actually took place as, as two people that were physically brought down to earth from a physical or metaphysical location uh, beforehand. What I'm suggesting is changing the framework totally on how we look at the Quran. That's what I'm saying. You're, and and I'll let me give you an example. If for every verse or story or whatever in the Quran um, you, 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 if you look at how people interpret it today and then you say oh okay so look we're proving that the Quran the scientific facts in the Quran what if the science changes and you already you said oh the Quran pro proves the science and then the science changes in a hundred years so is the Quran wrong? Of course not so I think using it in that framework where I want to prove everything in the Quran with science put you in a position where you're a very weak position because science will change. And if you used it in that, in that context, you're kind of, you know, hitting yourself. And that's why I don't, 
I said, the Quran is not about that. The Quran points to, to nature and says, look, right? And now there are so many verses, how you interpret the verses can change depending on the status of knowledge you are at that time. If you go back a thousand years and look how the, the interpreters interpreted many of the verses, it didn't make sense. I mean, in their time, it made sense because that was the level of science. Today, if you take their interpretation, it doesn't make sense. And you say, oh, no, let's interpret it in light of today's scientific knowledge, right? So it's, it, so it's all about how you interpret, depending on the status of knowledge. And rather than using it as a scientific, to take from it scientific evidence to what is science, I don't think that's what the Quran's purpose is. And that's how many people, like you said, become very suspicious and don't know how to deal with it. Right. I, I think the reason why it's a, it's a bigger deal than it may appear is because the, the, there's a principle missing when it comes to the, the story of humanity when it comes to science in the scientific perspective. The story, story of humanity in the scientific perspective is that this was an illogical being, a being without reason, a being that was to the level of animalistic, just, just going based off of what it's wired to do, to a being of logic and reason and understanding and, and, and moral uh, responsibility. That is completely different than the story of humanity in Islam, because in Islam, the story of humanity is you from the beginning are logical. You, are, you from the beginning are reasonable. And that's what differentiates you from all the beings around you. Yeah, but let me stop you there. This is an interpretation of the verses, what you just said. I could take those verses and interpret them in a totally different way that makes sense with science. That the, and if you look, at, although I don't want to go down that road, because I told you it's a futile. There are many verses that says there were other kinds that came before you who behaved differently, who, and so on and so forth. So you could there are so, but I don't I don't want to go there because to me it's a it's futile. It's how you interpret it to make sense to to the knowledge you have. So for 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 humans to come for humans to have evolved from a from an ancestor that didn't have the brain capacity that we have as homo sapiens ha has nothing to do, uh, I mean, does not deny God, does not deny Islam, does not even deny the story of Adam and Eve, right? And we need to be careful. Uh, Allah yeah, reminded but, but how... us in the Quran not to be, uh, Allah reminded us in the Quran not to be arrogant, that, oh, we are the perfect being. We have the brain. We have the conscience. No, there are many verses in the Quran that talk about in, in a way, evolution of, of humans from uh, other forms to this form that we know today, the, uh, we, we, we don't even understand today how the brain functions, right? Uh, how behavior happens. What, what does it mean at the molecular level? <laughs> Back to molecular biology. How, the, what, how those proteins and how those cells talk to each other. Nobody understands how the brain develops. So there's still a lot of work for science to do. So I wouldn't start now trying to find every explanation of the Quran in science because you won't end anywhere. Focus, like the Quran says, work on the morals and values. Use your brain and mind to be curious and ask questions and, and explore science as much as possible. And, and, and the Quran is the guide for us on how to do things ethically, to follow the morals and the values uh, as as the verses tell us, as the stories tell us, and so on. Interesting. Very cool. Uh, basically, there's unfinished business between science and, and uh, Islamic theology, and we shouldn't judge it now because there's things, many things that we don't know on both sides. So we can't even give a verdict, is what you're saying. Like, leave it up to, I see, I see. One of the verses in the Quran, to me, that, that, that indicates directly, and again, I'm not a theologian, as, you, as we've mentioned, uh, go dig deep in the earth, right? And see how creation began. Uh, and you don't even have to dig deep as you should, obviously, um, to recognize that if there's a beginning, that means there's a middle and there's an end, right? Like there, there's a story. It, uh, even God indicates within his own creation, there's a beginning. There's a story to this creation. It's not end all be all in the creation immediately. Uh, again, I don't like to use the Quran to prove science because to me it's a futile. But there's a verse in the Quran that says, الذي أحسن كل شيء خلقه. أحسن doesn't mean better. It means the most fit for that situation. 
كل شيء انطلق ف everything is the most fit and it keeps evolving and to me the theory of evolution is a testimonial to the existence of a god and it makes you in awe and wonder of such uh, power intelligence whatever you want to call it uh, the almighty uh, the the way the, those laws were made and just left to unfold and then you have all this diversity organisms the molecules and all from one simple beginning and by the way the proof is i mean it's overwhelming when you know that every living organism uh, is made of dna and 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 we all have dna just the, the change in the sequence that is profound that is profound so to me uh, realizing evolution as a fact is a testimonial that there is a god and, and it makes it even much more beautiful when when the the god that we believe in is a god who who has told us that he is surely a god who loves the slow planning who loves seeing things roll out slowly and we find that to be in our own lives in our own lives you will the sunnah al haya right like the way of life things don't happen immediately things don't <laughs> things go on evolutionarily right like even within our own lives and it's so beautiful to recognize a god who who tells us that about himself tells us that he's the most subtle tells us that he's the best of planners and loves seeing slow plans go out um and and also promotes us to dig deep into the earth and check out the universe yeah